Here's a fun fact. Goats get <laughs> sick less than any other land mammal. Okay, <laughs> why on earth does this really matter? Well, if you're interested in mega dosing vitamin C, then you need to be taking some advice from those funny little goats. Okay, see goats are a mammal that can produce their own vitamin C. A lot of mammals can. Humans are actually somewhat unique. We cannot produce our own vitamin C, which is why we need to take it. Okay, goats produce 13,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day. That is 50 times what a human is recommended to consume, and goats are smaller than humans. Okay, so what the heck? Now here's what's even more wild. When a goat gets sick, it has been found that they produce 10 to 100 times the amount of vitamin C they normally produce. That means that they're producing like 130,000 plus milligrams of vitamin C when they get sick or they are stressed out. Okay, we don't take anywhere near that. In fact, we just go along with our 1,000 milligrams a day of our cheap little vitamin C with rose hips, and we do that every day and hope we don't get sick, and then we still get sick, and we go, what the heck, I was taking my vitamin C. Come on, we need to be taking more, but I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you to officially take more, but I can load you up with research, and you can just be fascinated by it, and you can make your own decision and talk to your own doctor and your own family. Anyhow, let's move on. Before we dive into how this relates to humans, because you're not a goat, uh, please do hit the red subscribe button for scientific, awesome education coming out daily. Okay? And then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never ever miss a beat. Then after this video, I've assembled some really cool groceries at Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store, and I have different categories of different groceries that I recommend from a health, uh, health and education standpoint, so, so you can stock your pantry with the right things. So anyhow, special discount, special pricing on Thrive Market down below in the description. We gotta watch this video first so you understand the things I'm talking about. Yes, I do have some good high vitamin C foods in there too. Check them out after the video. So let's take a look at humans for a second. Okay, so there's this thing called the Transform Alliance for Health. It's set up by Dr. Vivian Lowe, and she's done some amazing research. She's probably one of the smartest people on the planet, okay? So she found that patients that would consume 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C above their baseline each day would get some stomach discomfort. They would get bloating, they would have some kind of distress. However, she found, again, just like with the goats, when humans were sick or stressed, she could give patients more vitamin C and they wouldn't have an issue. In fact, in one particular case, 18,000 milligrams of vitamin C triggered no stomach upset. Why? Because it was actually getting utilized. Vitamin C isn't something we need all the time. It's something that we need when we need and we don't when we don't. Okay, so yes, we should be potentially megadosing vitamin C, but let's take it a little further. Let's look at collagen for a second because everyone brushes off collagen as my hair, skin, and nails, and unless I'm 60 years old, I don't care. Huh, you should care because your arterial wall is collagen too. And guess what? Vitamin C is critical, critical for collagen production. Okay, we'll talk more about that when we get down to the heart disease section of this video that you do not want to miss. Okay, now vitamin C increases the absorption and utilization of iron. Okay, it increases non-hemi-iron being bound to hemi-iron, so that means that we're actually going to utilize the iron and not just have it floating through the bloodstream, potentially oxidizing, because iron, just like if you were to leave an iron dumbbell out in the parking lot in the rain, it's going to rust. Iron will oxidize in your blood. We want to utilize it. We want to get taken up. Well, it turns out that vitamin C increases the absorption 67%. Okay. Now, where are most people getting their vitamin C these days? I'm going to have my glass of orange juice along with my oatmeal this morning. I'm getting my vitamin C. I hate to sound like a sarcastic prick by saying it like that, but the point is, is that that's not going to help you. A, it's not much vitamin C, but B, carbohydrates. If you consume carbohydrates or glucose with your vitamin C, there's a good chance you probably won't absorb your vitamin C. When you look at mammals that produce their own vitamin C, vitamin C is chemically derived from glucose. Okay, now we don't make vitamin C, I understand that, but vitamin C and glucose still share the same transporter in our gut. So what does that mean? It means our body is going to take in the glucose instead of the vitamin C because they're competing for the same receptor, the same transporter. Okay, so we consume carbohydrates, we consume orange juice and vitamin C. Cool, we got vitamin C, but guess what? It doesn't even get utilized because glucose is taking priority. Oh man, okay, so what do we do? Well, the simple point here is that we're talking about, and this video has much more, so I'm not ending it here. 
The point is, is that when we're sick or stressed, which a lot of us are, we do need a lot more vitamin C, and we do need to be absorbing it. But have you ever heard about the link between stress and heart disease and how, oh, maybe the heart attack was triggered by stress, not just diet? <laughs> well, here we go. And it all comes back to, again, Dr. Vivian Lowe, who I have to give major credit to. I'm not the scientist behind this. I'm just translating it because I find it fascinating. Okay, if you've ever gotten blood work done, if you look on your lab test, there is a funny little thing that says lipoprotein A, or LPA, and no one ever talks about it because everyone's shaming you for your LDL or shaming you for this or that, but they're not focusing on this one little piece there that is quite important. Matter of fact, if you were to ask your doctor, and fun fact, I've done this, what LPA is, they're probably not going to even be able to tell you, okay? So what the heck is LPA? LPA is ultimately an imposter in the body. Now, it has its place, but let's talk about it in just a second. Here's something interesting to remember. Animals that make their own vitamin C, like the goats, are significantly less prone to heart disease. And mammals that cannot make their own vitamin C, humans, guinea pigs, randomly, they are much more prone to heart disease. Well, there's already a correlation there, but correlation doesn't equal causation. So let's dive a little bit further. What causes heart disease? What is heart disease? Well, it's really when you have excessive clotting and arterial plaque that builds up and ultimately clogs your heart, right? Okay, so that is heart disease in a nutshell. Well, when we look at some discoveries that were made at Transform Alliance for Health with Dr. Vivian Lowe and also Dave Heldman, who is a very well-known name in the metabolic health world, we found that LPA, lipoprotein A, looks a lot like LDL, like LDL cholesterol, except it has a funny little tail on it. So it floats around through the bloodstream, except it cannot bind to an LDL receptor because it has a tail. It's like basically a boat trying to get into a dock, but if that boat were to have some weird appendage off of it where it couldn't dock, well, that's kind of what lipoprotein A is. But that's not really the important part. What we have to talk about is the clotting piece. You see, what we really have to pay attention to is how lipoprotein A looks like something known as plasminogen. Now let's talk clotting for just a second. And I know you might be getting bored, but trust me, I'm gonna get back to why you should just mega dose vitamin C because this is earth shattering stuff here. Okay, so plasminogen clears up clotting. So here's what happens when you have a clot, right? Okay, you have an injury, scab, okay, you have fibrin, you have these things that form that basically uh, cause a clot or a scab. Think of it like this. There's a big accident on the freeway, a big nasty accident, and they have to clear the accident. So in order to clear the accident, they need to form a clot. Okay, they need to set up a barricade, the police cars need to come, and they need to block traffic so that they can actually deal with the accident. And then once the accident's done, plasminogen comes in, and plasminogen says, okay, clear it up. It's like a tow truck. It clears everything away and allows traffic to run back through, okay? Well, we come back to LPA. LPA looks like plasminogen, but it's not. Okay, so plasminogen is there to clear up the freeway but we've got this weird LPA that looks like plasminogen, but all it does is just add to the clot, okay? So it's like a tow truck that comes in that says, pretends to be a tow truck, but has no capability of towing a vehicle whatsoever. So all it does is just add more vehicles. It doesn't actually do any work, it doesn't help, it just makes the mess bigger, and makes the clot worse. See where we're getting with this? Now, where does vitamin C come into the equation? Vitamin C is absolutely, absolutely critical for the collagen formation that is going to form the arterial wall to rebuild the highway. So imagine this, big accident on the freeway. It destroyed the freeway and they had to clear it all up, but we don't have the vitamin C to build the materials to fix the freeway. So the clot builds and builds and builds and builds more and more and more and more. And then lipoprotein A comes in and pretends to want to clear it up, but it just adds more, and you get a bigger clot. So that lack of vitamin C actually made it so your clot is worse and the artery cannot heal. What? Holy cow. It doesn't just like continue to build more. What will they call in more plasminogen to try to clear it? But more plasminogen also looks like LPA, right? So we have more LPA coming in. This lack of vitamin C when we are stressed, this lack of vitamin C when we are sick, 
doesn't just affect you in the short term with your sickness, it affects you long term with your heart disease. And I will, I'll go, I will go on record and say that what I see out of all this is that that link between stress and heart disease is more than just inflammation. It has to do with how we don't get enough vitamin C in this. One more wild thing before I leave you with, okay? It turns out that there is a strong link because around the time historically in our evolution that we stopped making our own vitamin C is about the exact same time that we started producing LPA in our bodies. So, hmm, eventually we evolved and we stopped producing this vitamin C and we started making LPA. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna load up on vitamin C. And I'm not your doctor and I can't tell you how much to take, but I can say that you should probably be your own experiment. You should probably see what helps you not feel sick. I can do more videos on mega dosing vitamin C and the benefits of cortisol and everything like that with it, but you have to let me know down below in the comment section. As always, please do keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.